Hi and welcome to day 5 of Defemoramba, your daily ephemera inspiration in December. Today's prompt is coffee and button card. So let's make some ephemera out of these things. Coffee? <laughs> not much, but yeah. <laughs> Better not much than nothing. Some buttons, <laughs> some more buttons and two cards. Okay, so that seems to be not so difficult, but our prompt list doesn't say coffee, button and card, but it says coffee and button card. So what does this mean? Um, yeah, so perhaps you are new to junk journaling then you've probably never heard about a button card. When I started junk journaling and I heard this word for the first time, I thought, hey, what shall this, this be? So I will show you some button cards from my stash here. Please excuse that these look really damaged and really strange, but um, these come from the stash of my grandmother. And As you can see, she obviously used parts of these cards, so they look a little bit strange. So normally, these cards are way bigger. I think she teared them uh, when she has used all of the buttons that are on there. She has uh, thrown this paper away um, and only saved the rest. So um, I think these both pieces, once were together and she has just teared it. Um, and these also are not these normal buttons, but um, yeah, you have seen that. I don't know the English word. They are clipped to this card. Um, so let's see if we can make our own button card. Um, and I also think it's really worth it to try to make your own button card because it's really hard to get those original cards on eBay or wherever. So first of all, I have to take a sip of coffee. Um, it's really cold, but you know, um, if you drink cold coffee, you will be really beautiful in the end. <laughs> so that's a saying in Germany. So perhaps <laughs> you know that as well. So I have some coffee uh, in this little spray bottle, also a little finger sponge. And I would like to make a background for my card first because I don't like this original color of the card so i mean this blue with the gold i really don't like that i want to make it a little bit more junk journaly vintagey artsy you know <laughs> if you have seen the other videos you know i would like to try to make these ephemera pieces as easy as possible but um yeah also in this artsy way so first of all, I'm trying to spritz some of my coffee and I'm already realizing that this is really dark. The coffee has been on my table for a few days and I think the longer it is in this spray bottle, the darker it gets. And um, yeah, I thought, okay, it looks a little bit strange and a little bit too dark. So um, I've spritzed some water. Um, this way you can get a lighter effect of this coffee. Um, if you don't like it too dark, of course, you can also make the mixture of your coffee with way more water. Um, but I haven't realized it uh, until I have spritzed it to my card. I try to get this all over this card to get a really nice and beautiful background. And now my, my plan is to splash some Distress Oxide ink to this background. Um, I have done that with watercolor. I have shown you a tutorial of this as well. So you can, can find that video on my channel as well. Um, I've never tried that with Distress Oxide ink. And I'm also not sure if that will work on this wet background. I like to try a wet in wet technique, but I'm not sure if that will work. Um, when I tried that out with watercolor, I did that on um, a dry background. And so this was yeah some kind of an adventure for me. So um, I've just picked some ink, um, some Distress Oxide ink with this finger sponge and then I've spritzed some water to the sponge to get yeah 
a really splashy result. And as you can see, that worked really well. I was a little bit surprised that it worked so well on this wet background. Um, but I also had some problems with the next drops. As you can see, this is not so extreme like the first one. And it also blends immediately to the background. Of course, that's a normal thing because the background is wet, but I think it's also a cool effect. Mm, the idea behind these splashes is to make some kind of really abstract circles that later on are behind my buttons that I want to sew to this card, um, so that this background looks a little bit interesting and, yeah, like, these buttons that I will sew have some kind of a frame or a shadow or something like that. So I'm doing the same thing here on the second card. And yeah, as you can see, this looks really interesting. And this is the stage where you think this shall look the same when it's dry, but you know it will not <laughs> look the same when this is dry. So um, I know that, but of course I have to dry it and I know that it will change a little bit. Mm, the best way would be to let it air dry, but um, I don't have the time and the patience to, to do that. I wanted to know <laughs> how this looks dry. So um, I took my heat gun and now I'm drying this without moving the heat gun so if you want to do that with your heat gun do it really carefully don't move the heat gun and do it really slowly and really carefully so that you don't move your drops and while this is drying i show you the next letter for the giveaway it's this one here so please write it down if you want to enter the giveaway all the informations for the giveaway are down below in the description box. If you perhaps are new to this Defemoramba series and this is the first video that you watch, please read the info box. You can still join the giveaway. And yeah, so here's the result. It's dry now and as you can see, <laughs> it has changed a lot and it's not that vibrant than it was before and especially on the right card it looks really strange and I'm not so happy with this um, it's yeah some kind of too um, abstract for me so um, I think it's because I use this wet and wet technique um, and here I'm just trying out how this will look when the buttons are on top and I've decided that I don't like that and I, um, that I want to try to change this a little bit. So since this is dry, of course, I can um, add another layer of Distress Ink mixed with water. And that's what I want to try here now. So, um, yeah, junk journaling, you know, it's this kind of change your mind, try out different things if the one thing doesn't work try out something else so let's try how this looks and as you can see this is mm, much more concrete is that the word I don't know the frame of this um, little splash is much more visible and these little um, splashes that go to the side this this thing looks like a sun and I wanted to have um, these really filigran, filigran on the outside. So I think you can only reach this effect if you um, put this ink to a dry surface. And I'm really happy that I uh, tried this and put this on top um, so that I can get the result that was in my mind. <laughs> um, but of course, this first layer is also some kind of important because, yeah, in the end you will see that this mixture of this wet and wet technique and this wet on dry technique is what this thing uh, makes, what this thing makes, nine, <laughs> no, <laughs> this makes this thing special. Oh my goodness, you, you can't imagine how hard this job is to do these videos in English and German and English and German and 
I'm always mixing the language because my brain is too slow. Sorry. <laughs> Hopefully it makes sense what I have said <laughs> a second ago. So here you can see um, these things are really different, but at the same time they match each other. And I think this looks really cool. And um, yeah, so I will let this dry. I will let this air dry, I want to say, so that I don't mess up this pattern. Um, but I also would like to try to add some more ink to the left card um, just to see how this will come out. Um, even if the left card is already better than the right, I mean, the right, than the right was before. But I want to have... Um, these more filigrane splashes on the left card as well. So that's what I'm trying here. I'm just taking my finger sponge and then I'm adding these splash splashes to the other card as well. Okay, so... Then we have this and I think we can make this brown background uh, a little bit more interesting. Mm, until now it looks really boring to me. So I'm taking this cold coffee that I had here in my cup. So I'm, I just have to make sure that I don't drink out of this cup anymore for this craft session um, because now I'm taking a brush and I'm trying to get really small controlled drops to my background. I mean only to this um, brown area that's already dry and when I have that I let this air dry. I will put that to my oven so that it's a little bit faster and here you can see the result. It looks really different to what we had before because the the oxide ink reacts with water and when it's dry of course it looks a little bit different but I really like this result and I'm really happy that I put the second um, layer of drops um, on top of the the first one when 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 it was dry looks really really cool. And now I would like to decide which buttons I want to use. And what you can see here on my desk is a collection of buttons of my grandmother. She had those in her kitchen um, shelf. And as a child, I was allowed to play with these buttons. I really don't know if she has used these buttons or why they are so different. But this was such a cool experience in my childhood i yeah have this memory and it's really really meaningful for me so i would like to choose some special buttons that speak to me and that tell me that they want to go to this card <laughs> don't know if that makes sense so um please don't ask and please don't wish that these button cards go to one of my junk journals for sale. That will never happen. These cards will stay in my personal um, collection. So I'm not able to give those away. I will put them into a very special journal because this collection is also so special. As you could see a second ago, this pink thingy is really strange. And this, um, yeah, this thing where she um, has collected it is really old. And yeah, I can't give it away. So I will make these only for myself. And that was also a really cool experience to make something that's only for me. And this was a really me time session to make these button cards okay so um i have collected some of these uh, not collected uh they already were collected by my grandmother sorry that's the wrong word um i have chosen some buttons that are in the same color range so that it gets not too wild on the card um and these are the buttons that i want to use for my cards then I have prepared this template. This piece of paper is exactly the same size like my card. And now I would like to 
find the position of the single buttons because I know I would never be able to um, sew them in this straight way as they lay on the card now. So I'm trying to use this grid paper as a guide to find the position for these these buttons. So first of all, I, I would like to try to find the horizontal line where they have to go. Um, a grid paper is a really good idea to use as a template because you can count these little squares and see really easily without measuring where you want to have the buttons. And I make little marks here so that I can remember where I want to have them. So first for these horizontal lines and then I came to the idea that I can just place the buttons to this grid paper that would be of course much easier um, to find the position so you can see it much better than when you put them on the card. But you know, when the camera is recording, sometimes my brain isn't working really well. <laughs> um, and if you have different sizes of buttons, it's also not so easy to find the position. But I think I've managed that really well. And where these both lines meet, I will poke a hole with my awl um, through this paper and my card so that I later on can see the exact position uh, where my buttons have to go. So um, to poke this hole, I am just taking a book so that I don't um, damage my table. And then I'm placing this template exactly to the card. So this, of course, has to be really exact um, because otherwise the holes are not there where you want them. Then I'm poking the holes here with my awl. Um, it's, yeah, I think a really good help, especially... If you've never sewn buttons to a paper or something like that. So for me, sewing is always uh, really difficult. And I, mm, yeah, to be honest, I don't like that so much. And I would like to find the most easiest way to do that. So the next problem here is um, how can I make sure that I. Um, get this button really in the right position. I mean, this hole will be hidden below the button. Um, how can I know where I have to sew? Um, so I've decided to take um, some glue and just glue the buttons to the card before I sew them so that they can't move when I have my needle and my thread. So I've just um, put a tiny bit of bookbinders glue to this uh, back side of the button and then I've looked where the hole is and then I've glued them all so that they are in the right position. I think that's really easy and really helpful. And here I'm just taking a bookbinders thread. I really like this thread. Of course you can use any thread that you like or some uh, embroidery thread or whatever would work of course but I wanted to have this brown and I also yeah it's an emotional thing I wanted to bring my passion for junk journaling and book binding in contact to this button collection of my grandmother and when I used this bookbinders thread, um, yeah, these both things came together, not only on the card, but in my heart and my soul, in my whole process, everything came together and it was like I can sit on my at my desk and craft with my grandmother. I really enjoyed crafting with my grandmother when I was a child and this was a really emotional thing to bring these things together. It was like she was watching me doing my favorite stuff. And when I was a child, it was the other way around. I watched her doing her favorite stuff. And yeah, you know me. <laughs> Sometimes I get a little bit emotional when I do these things. But I think that's also a special thing about junk journaling, that these emotional things sometimes happen and 
you don't you can't um see them come to you but when they are there they are so extremely and so it intensive that you can't um yeah ignore them it's it's really crazy <sighs> okay so um here you can see the sewn buttons on the card and as you can see the background background louise the backside sorry i'm always mixing these both words um the backside looks not very beautiful and the other thing is the backside is not so handy if you put this card into your junk journal if you put it into a pocket um it would look nice but it's not so handy when you take it out it can happen that the thread um tears the paper or whatever so i want to go the secure way and sew these cards on a piece of scrapbooking paper and while i'm sewing i show you the next letter for the giveaway that's this one here so please write it down and if you don't know what i'm talking about please check the info box there is every information that you need to enter the giveaway that i'm running during this defemember series and here you can see the finished result uh, or nearly finished result my sewing machine made some special effects i'm not really amused about that but now i have to live with that the back side looks really beautiful but on the front side i don't know what happened there but yeah let's live with that um and now i would like to stamp the word buttons um to a little label and bring that to my card i'm using a brown uh, ink to stamp that because i think that looks really interesting and really um yeah it's matching the rest of the colors black would be too hard for me and um then i've just glued these little labels to a little uh, piece of brown coffee dyed paper and brought that to the card and yeah if you like these button cards and you think oh that's great then i have a little surprise for you so i think it's time for the next freebie <laughs> surprise surprise i made a button card freebie for you so um the freebie is a little bit different than what you can see here in the video that's because of the scrapbooking paper that i've used here because that's not copyright free of course um i have to use a background that's public domain and uh yeah I don't want to make a copyright infringement. So um they look a little bit different but perhaps you have fun with them. If you want to get the freebies of my button cards, please read the info box. There's the link to download these freebies. I hope you like them and I hope it's a little yeah, fun playing thing, fun thing to play <laughs> for you. A little gift from me to you i hope you like it and i hope you will enjoy it i think um printable button cards are really cool um even if you can't feel the buttons because they are flat i think it's cool because you can put them into your junk journal and the journal will go get not so bulky than when you use real buttons so perhaps you like them I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure that you also visit the channel of 49 Dragonflies today. She has another version of the prompt of today. I hope we will see tomorrow. And I wish you all the best. See you. Bye bye.